Ken Siegel worked along the legendary founder of Apple, Steve Jobs, for 12 years. He is the man behind the eye in iMac and is also a writer. Ken Siegel, welcome to our Studio 12 interview. Thank you. Among a, uh, a lot of things, you advised Mr. Uh, Steve Jobs how to name Apple's brands. How did you came up with the eye? Well, it's, um, I wish I could say it was an easy journey. It took a bit of work. Um, when we, you know, you have to start at the beginning. The iMac was the very first computer that Steve would unveil after his dramatic return to Apple. So it had to be perfect in every way. So we had this machine that looked unlike anything anybody had ever seen before. It was translucent blue. And in those days, computers were very beige and box-like. Yes. Um, so he had this machine that was going to reignite Apple and he wanted it to be perfect so we got called in one day to think about the name for it and he already had a name that he liked he said internally they had come up with a name he was very excited about it but like many things he said if you can do better you know now's your chance because you only have two weeks <laughs> so how did you feel uh, so, uh, to get this assignment uh, well you know it was actually it was sort of the beginning of Steve's return to Apple so it 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 we all believed that good things were coming, but we didn't know. It was no. all faith at that time. So your first uh, name suggestion was? Yeah, well, so Steve had that name that he had in his head, which was kind of shocking. It was Mac Man. That's what he wanted. And we all sort of laughed like you just did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, we thought, well, we could do better than that because, you know, Mac Man sounded rather sexist, you know. Thing. So, uh, so we worked for a while and, and to be honest um, the iMac really was the concept of the machine was a, a Macintosh to get you on the internet so looking back at it it was easy it was the the i for internet and the Mac for Macintosh but it, it wasn't quite that easy back in those times so you know we we showed him we worked for quite a long time and um, how did you work had well you know things on the wall and, you know, and friends, different you know, people who were, you know, related to the, you know, part of the whole Apple effort. It wasn't just the ad agency. Um, so we had all these names and we whittled them down to the five that we liked best. But everybody in my group liked the iMac best. It was short and sweet, as they say. And then came the big presentation to Steve and, you know, you have to think, like, do I show him, like, the the four ones that are like kind of okay and then do the big one or do I do the big one first because we like it the most so I decided to wait and have the the iMac come out at the end so Steve hated all the other names and we had mm -hmm. things I shouldn't even tell you what they were it's kind of embarrassing but we had names like Maxter and Mac Rocket and things like that but iMac made sense because we thought among other things it could be a foundational name. You could have I other things. So you were, you had that in mind. Yeah, but you know, at that time there were no iPhones, iPods. Mm -hmm. It was just computers. So although we knew we could name other products that, and we ultimately did have iBooks and iPhoto and iMovie, that was all part of the original idea that we could do that. Um, but we never saw. I don't think Steve even saw phones and music players and things like that. So uh, anyway, he hated all the names, <laughs> including iMac. Mm -hmm. um, and then he asked us what to What did come they back say when you say, showed well, him you know, the iMac? It, it's like, but you, know, you, you argue all the reasons why it's perfect. You know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's the iMac, it's the Mac that gets you on the internet. And, it, and the I stands for I, meaning me, and imagination, and inspiration, and all those things that an I can stand for. And Steve was like, yeah, well, Go back and work some more. <laughs> so uh, we came back a week later, and this time we brought three new names. Um, but then an old man in advertising once taught me that, you know, if you believe in something, by all means, bring it back. Some people I've worked with in my life, if it were rejected, as Steve rejected it the first time, would never brought it back because he might get mad. You know, how dare you bring that back again? But Steve wasn't that way. You know, Steve wanted you to to be passionate about your opinions and, and argue if you believed in something. So we showed him three new names, all of which he hated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it was like, but oh, we still like this one. I had a board, you know, iMac, it's perfect. And this time he looked at it and he said, I don't hate it this week, but I still don't like it. <laughs> he goes, and now you got two more days left before we have to start the process or it's gonna be Mac Man. <laughs> so, um, and then it was funny because um, Really, it was like... Were you nervous then? Or? No, I mean, it was just part of, you know, working with Steve was not easy. Um, he was very particular and demanding and had a certain, you know, 
he had a, a level of quality in his head, and if, if what you had done didn't reach that level, even though you might have been happy with it, it might not have been Steve's level of happiness. So um, really nothing else happened after that. The next day, I, I was talking to someone inside Apple, and they said that Steve had the name silkscreened on a computer, on a model, and he was showing it around his inner circle and getting good feedback. So really there was no further conversation. You know, one day I get a call saying we're going with iMac, and I'm like, oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> so I don't have to do anything. So that's how that started. So how did you feel yeah. then? Well, even then, you know, Apple was really near bankruptcy at the time. They, they had a long way to go. They hadn't been profitable in a very long time. So when that computer finally hit the market, um, and I was proud that I had named it, um, and then it started selling more and more, and it became like the best-selling uh, Apple computer of all time. So that also made me feel great. Um, and then you start seeing all these other eye things, and it's like, gee, you know, what did we do? Because we really couldn't anticipate that. So then we did have, you know, the software, iMovie, iPhoto, that kind of thing, and, and the iBook, and there are a lot of eye things. And then, you know, there are eye things all around the world now, not even yeah. from Apple. Everybody sort of, you know. Uh, How does that make you feel? Well, you know, it's, it's, you know, for a while, you know, you try not to get a, a too big ahead about these things because it's one thing, you know. Um, so I could say to people, like, I'm the expert product namer, you know, hire me. Uh, and I have done other product names, um, but nothing you'd really probably even recognize. Um, you know, it's, it's just a skill. It's part of marketing in general. Like, you know, what, what will people respond to? You want to give a product a, you know, a personality if possible. Yeah. And iMac certainly was that. You know, at, the, at that time, no Macintosh had ever been called Mac. That was a new thing, too. Just a, it was the friendlier version of Macintosh. Mm -hmm. It was just a Mac. Um, and that the fact that you know, the Mac was you know, the second letter. You know, we had something in front of it. So for Apple, it was a bit, uh, you know, it was a bold step of sorts. And, and it's funny how that worked with Steve in many different ways. Like he was very particular and demanding, and he would act like he didn't really love something oftentimes, and yet when you saw him on stage, you know, revealing to the world, he would just beam with pride, you yeah. know, like, this is like the greatest thing we've ever done, and it's called this, you know, and that would make you feel really good, because you knew Steve wasn't the kind of guy to give you a lot of compliments and everything, but when you saw him, you know, on television, giving interviews, talking about the product and everything, it's, um, you know, a very mm. gratifying feeling. I don't think yeah. a lot of people in advertising experience that, no. you know. But uh, you have a very special insight here, mm. uh, and you worked so for so long uh, close to Mr. Steve Jobs. Mm. And uh, how would you describe him, except from that, uh, to work yeah, um, not on the scene, behind the scene? Yeah. Well, when the biography came out, the official biography, Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson, um, I very you know hungrily devoured it. Um, I thought it was too negative of a picture uh, mm. that he he seemed very, very mean in that book. Uh, and a lot of people who were interviewed told their stories. The new book that just came out, Becoming Steve Jobs, um, is it, it, it paints a fairly brutal picture of the man, you know, because that's, that was part of him. But it also talks about his human side. And I think, my experience, I think everyone had a different experience, but my experience was that it was very mixed. People are complicated, and he could be... Uh, Working with him was fun. He was an interesting man. He had opinions about current events. We would, you know, we'd start meetings with just a general discussion oftentimes. And um, he was funny. He would make some really good jokes. You know, very intelligent, witty man. Mm. So when things were going well, you know, and he loves your work, and he's funny and charming and all that stuff, you go away thinking, this is the greatest job I ever had, you know. Mm. But there were those darker times when... He didn't like something, you know, once, twice, three times, and it's like, you know, you guys have a week, you got to solve this problem, and then you start feeling the pressure, and, mm. and you start having, you know, a bit of that fear because you you did know that he was very capable of, of exploding. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say it's like like dad, you know, like, you know, when dad is happy, the family is happy, and you're like, but, but we don't want dad to get angry, you know. So uh. so there was always in the back of your mind because you knew that he was very capable mm. of 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 having. Uh, a bit of a temper, yeah. you know. Is it anything uh, particular that you learn from him? There is, actually. When Steve died, um, I had to write a blog article. I didn't have to, but I thought it was appropriate. Um, 
And I, I gave some thought to what, what he had meant to me, uh, what working with him had meant to me. And it's going to sound a little trite, as they say, um, but I think what I got from Steve was the idea of doing the right thing. I think he was a very, and I mean that in a moral sense and in a product sense. And in the moral sense, like when people would have problems with Apple, like in some part of the world we ran an ad that might have offended somebody, he would just say, you know, but that's who we are, and I don't want to, like, change who we are just so we sell a few more computers in some country. Mm -hmm. So he had kind of a, a moral way. And, and when, he, when they created the app store, he, he insisted that they not have pornography and things, you know, bad mm -hmm. apps. He wanted yeah. to sort of regulate it. So he, he wanted the Apple customer to have a great experience. And he didn't care if that put off some people because he was talking to a, a particular kind of person. But then in the product sense, when uh, we would create advertising, for example, if we wanted to use uh, a heavier stock of paper for, a, for an insert we might put in a magazine or something. I mean, he wanted the highest quality thing. Uh, normally, if it came down to like what would be the best customer experience, mm -hmm. he, was, he would do that. He would pay more or he would take more time, whatever it would take, because he thought you know, quality was really important. And Wasn't he it the risk that. that he was too much into the details? Uh, not really, because yeah. I think that's kind of what made him what he is and what made Apple's products what they are. Mm -hmm. you, you, um, you get a sense from them that someone has really, really cared. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I've been in a lot of those uh, meetings where he would go over products or ads or whatever, and, and he was pretty meticulous. Um, he, you know, I remember when he was the second version of the iMac, he sat there once and, and took me through it. Uh, all the things that had changed on it. And he, he showed me things that nobody would ever notice in a million years. Like mm -hmm. on the edges of the original iMac, there were actually like four pieces of plastic that came together, but it was all very beautiful. You, you know, it wouldn't strike anyone as odd. He goes, this time, it's one piece of plastic. Wow. And he was like, he would give me a big <laughs> smile, like, isn't that cool? And yeah. like, okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, the whole inside of the, the translucent iMac, you know, the, the circuit boards were visible and he wanted every circuit board to be perfect. And mm. I remember I was talking to a guy from another computer company and he was like stunned. He goes, who would do that? Who, you know, we've never given any thought to designing our circuit boards, no. you know, but Steve had that thing. You think it's a part of the success? Yeah. yeah. You know, there's this new book that's out about Steve becoming Steve Jobs. They talk about some of those things when he was trying to make a success of Next. That was the company he started when he was thrown out of Apple. Um, that some of the things he tried there with his meticulous attention to detail sort of helped drag the company down. But that was him, you know, and it didn't work on Next so much, but when he got to Apple and started crafting these products that people would fall in love with and caring mm -hmm. about every detail, um, I think that same thing that didn't work at one point in his life did work when he came back to Apple mm -hmm. and, and maybe the world had become more sophisticated too, and people were ready for products that were better designed as well as functional. Yeah. Apple has come a long way since you invited the eye. Mm. Uh, when, uh, at what point did you first realize that this is, this is gonna be a big thing? The eye are we speaking about? Yes. Uh, well, you know, that first iMac sold, like I say, it sold better than any yeah. other, uh, product in Apple's history. And, and Steve actually had one phone call. It was funny. Um, a quick Steve story. I will, I will leave the, the obscenities out of it. <laughs> but um, that first brochure we did, that was like an inset in a magazine. It was like a 16-page piece or something, and it had to be perfect. And there was one photograph in there that Steve thought was, you know, he, he got very upset that we had the wrong color blue on the keyboard. There was blue on the computer and blue on the keyboard. Um, and it was like, well, that was the photograph we got from Apple. You know, your own people took, you know, we mm -hmm. didn't do anything. We're innocent. <laughs> but he was screaming his head off because it was the wrong color blue. And when we got the right picture, apparently we had been given the wrong picture. Mm -hmm. um, if you or I looked at them together, you, you wouldn't notice any difference at all. But in mm -hmm. Steve's eye, it was a disaster. And you've ruined the launch of the computer and the whole bit. So we were able to change that. Um, but I tell you that story only because just like, a few weeks later when, when the, the product actually was unveiled to the world, um, he actually called me in a very quiet voice and he said, I just want you to know that um, 
I got the, the Time magazine in my office today and, and the insert was in there and it looks gorgeous. And he was very quiet that way. Mm -hmm. He says, and I'm, I was driving home and I saw the billboard that went up today because everything was all coordinated to go at the same time and the billboard was gorgeous. And then I turned on the TV and our commercial came on. He goes, this is the best launch of a product in Apple history. And he goes, I think it was the best computer launch in the history of computers. <laughs> so I was like, Oh. Wow, that feels pretty good. Okay. So he, he said he wanted to thank me, and he wanted me to thank everybody in the ad agency who had anything to do with it, because he said, you know, tell them how much I love this. Mm. And so th there was that side of Steve, but yeah. you knew that it would take a lot to get him to say something like that. So that is probably the point where I felt like the best about mm. what we had accomplished as a team. Mm. Uh, we're running out of time here, but I, I just I also want to ask you, what do you think about Apple uh, today, their mm. products and their naming strategies? Like they have mm. iPhone, iPhone well, 4, iPhone yeah, first, 4S. Well, yeah, well, I was never a fan of the S. I, oh. I think personally, I think they should just go 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. <laughs> I think when you say one year it's a 4 and the next year it's a 4S, I think it kind of communicates that it's not a big leap, you know, whereas Samsung was, you know, three, four, five, six. Um, you're, you're, when your big competitor is saying, we've revolutionized, and, and Apple is saying, well, it's a little better this year. <laughs> to me, that, that's not great marketing. They have their reasons for doing what they do, I'm sure. But already, by the way, the rumor is that there is no iPhone 6S coming next year, that it is going to be a 7. They're skipping the S. Oh, so right. you have a special that. insight here. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's rumor on the street, you know. You have an Apple Watch? Uh, I ordered one. All right. It'll be here in one month, I think it is. Should it be named Very iWatch? Well, see, now that is the big thing because we have Apple Watch and Apple Pay. So I believe it's all over for the I. I think, right. uh, I think it's going to be retired. I, th I wouldn't be surprised um, if the iPhone 7 was just an Apple phone, to be okay. you know, for an example. And I think there's a really good reason for that, too, because, as we mentioned before, there's so many I things in the world. And any time Apple wants to name a new thing, there's trouble legally. In fact, about mm -hmm. I think it was about four months before the Apple Watch was announced, Timex, Timex Swatch, I think it was, has, has a product called iWatch. And they sort of fired a shot across Apple's bow <laughs> saying, <laughs> don't try it because we own this name. Um, and there's going to be a big problem if you try to take it. And I think at some point, Apple had tired of all this legal nonsense. And when you name a product yeah. Apple Watch instead of iWatch, it actually brands it better. You know, it's a watch from Apple, and you'll have Apple, what there already is an Apple TV. I, I think it's smarter. So I think you're going to see fewer eyes in the future and more Apple. Mm. So if it's the end of the I, how does that make you feel? Well, that's very sad. Yeah. <laughs> Should I start a write-in campaign, bring back the eye? Yeah, no, uh, on your blog? Yeah, right. Um, no, no, I think it's... it had a very good run. In fact, I tell people in 2006, I believe it was, when the Apple Store opened on Fifth Avenue, the kind of the famous cube, glass cube Apple Store, um, I was there because I was doing a, a documentary on the making of that store, the design of it. And... Um, Steve was there that morning, so I was there before the store opened. I was like, you know, every shelf was perfectly stocked. You know, the only time you'd ever see that in its history because it was going to be open 24 hours. Mm. Um, but anyway, I was standing by the iBook table with Steve, and we were talking about it. And, and he said then um, that the i is maybe on its last legs, and maybe we'd want to move away from that. But that was nine eight, years nine ago. years ago, yeah. yeah. Um, oh. So I think... One of the problems we talked about that day was that you have all these i things yeah. now, but you can't. You have an iMac. You can't really just make it a Mac because Mac is what they call all their computers. Yeah. So if someone said, "I want a Mac," it would be like, "Which one?" <laughs> so, yeah. so I think he said, "We need to think about that." But okay. um, you know, clearly, he would never intended the i to be forever. No. So, I have to accept this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming here and sharing okay. us about the story behind the eye. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure.